We have issues where the belly skin in a couple places around this trailer has fallen down. It's actually worn through the rivet head. So the rivet head is, is still there, popped up through, and there's a bigger hole around it. So what I've chosen to do is take some of these stainless washers and washer these rivets because I can't actually get a pan head rivet big enough um, to pull the whole thing up. So. so the aluminum washers, the only ones I could find were kind of ridiculously expensive for what they are. Um, it wasn't worth it. I'm just going to go with stainless. At some point, we'll have to replace this whole belly skin. There's a couple places where it's ripped, but for now, we're just going to keep it up tight. We want to make sure the um, gas lines are held up tight and um, everything is securely in place. So I think it's a, a good half step to get things better. This is one of the old pan head rivets that originally installed the belly skin. The head on these rivets is slightly smaller. What I really wanted was a head of a rivet somewhere closer to that size, but that's why I'm gonna do this with a, with a rivet through the washer and it should hold everything together. That's hysterical. Next to the step here, I've got an issue where the rivets are pulling through and I've tightened that up pretty well several places all around the body and I just don't like the idea of there being a half an inch of clay in the belly skin everywhere underneath the trailer so I've got a few more of these rivets to do like this but um did a bunch of them and it's it's a lot better getting ready to remove the last stabilizer so we can pay them broken several bolts so far. I'm hoping I can get this one out without breaking any more. Some of them are just rusted tight in the frame and they just break right off. This is definitely the worst part of the stabilizer project right now. All three bolts that were actually in here broke off. I'm gonna go to loosen them. Uh, this is the hardest one because I got the least amount of space just by where the airstream is parked and then also the dump valve plumbing but it shouldn't take me more than a few minutes to get it out. Sean was just finishing up spraying the top side of the stabilizer feet. We opted to take them down. There's a bit of rust starting to show up and it seems like they needed a nice fresh coat of paint. Clean them up. They were full of mud and um, got that all cleaned off. And I think they're gonna look better now when we get them back on. Um, quick coat of primer, quick coat of paint. <laughs> Almost effortless. Yeah, that's really nice. And it doesn't make that horrible screech. Yep, got the garbage out of them. Nice and greased up. Much happier now. That was worth doing. I think so. I think so. Well done, sir. One hand. <laughs> One hand. <laughs> oh yeah. No, I, I mean, we could have replaced them. They would have been shiny and new, but it, you know, for the, for the work, it didn't seem that much harder to just do a little rehab and clean them up. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. You should be impressed. Yep. That's a lot better. It is. It is. Hopefully we won't fill them with mud again in the next two days. I think you should have reasonable expectations, Mr. Wheeler, and we will definitely get them in the mud. It's supposed to rain this week. It's been a couple of months since we've had the ability to really thoroughly wash and walburnize, but um, that good shine is back now and the water's beating up and running right off.
Took a little while, but I'm happy we spent the time. Up here on the roof of the Airstream, I got an issue with the coax where the antenna wasn't working. And really it's just the piece that's outside the body. It has um, just been exposed to too much weather and it's not making a good connection. So got a splitter on there to test it. What I did was um, pull just a little more out of the body to get to some fresh stuff that hasn't been weather exposed and put a new end on it. So I'll just make a junction there, heat shrink everything up. got the original boot here which is not in very good condition but I've tried to seal the top of it and the final step to make this repair is nail nail and connection and we'll grab some heat shrink and finish it up I believe that'll work. This is a pretty simple problem and you wouldn't think it would take me three days to come up with a solution for it, but making sure that this connection is watertight so we don't have the rust issue we had before that led to no connectivity, but also it has to rotate 180 degrees one way back and 180 degrees that the other way to get a full 360 potential to get whatever channels you need to get. It's a bit of fun to try to get the cables to cooperate arranged zip tied back and all held correctly so that it still works like it's supposed to so i think we're finally done <laughs> 